This is the second of a set of presentations illustrating the Stop Thalassemia project of the Curtis Children Foundation. Bone marrow transplantation for severe thalassemia, outcomes in resource limited settings. In this presentation, I will present a summary of the outlook of individuals with thalassemia, uh, or results with bone marrow transplantation for thalassemia, particularly the experience of the Cure to Children Foundation in low resource settings and cost issues. Since the introduction of more effective uh, chelation therapy, in other words, the therapy that can remove iron from the body deriving from uh, frequent uh, red cell transfusions, the life expectancy of individuals with thalassemia has improved and many of them, if they receive adequate care, can become adults and have a long and productive life. Nevertheless, there are still some issues with the tolerance of drugs or red cell transfusion, uh, transfusion associated infections. Uh, adult patients with thalassemia often have osteoporosis and uh, pain, which can be uh, quite severe. Quality of life issues for many patients with thalassemia uh, having to have um, frequent transfusion, medical checkups, um, having to take drugs can be uh, difficult to accept and cost issues so that if a patient is born uh, nowadays with thalassemia and he, he is to receive uh, the appropriate care associated with the longer life expectancy, uh, the cost is actually quite high. It's probably in the range of a million dollars. And this is why in low resource settings, in spite of the availability of improved supportive care, uh, this has not uh, resulted in significant prolongation of life expectancy because of problems with access, costs, and availability of uh, specialized centers. Bone marrow transplantation is still the only uh, established modality for definitive cure of thalassemia. It has been used now for over 30 years and uh, over 4,000 uh, patients have been transplanted. So there is a lot of experience that has allowed to identify a group of patients that can do particularly well with bone marrow transplantation. And those are young children, generally less, less than seven years old, with no enlarged liver and with a compatible sibling. And uh, this particular group of patients uh, can enjoy a greater than 85% uh, success rate, probably even more than 90%. And uh, the reason why these uh, young children do well is because they have not yet, um, in spite of even poor chelation, they have not developed any irreversible organ damage so that they are uh, able to go to bone marrow transplantation essentially in good general conditions. What do we know about long-term results of bone marrow transplantation? As I told you, bone marrow transplantation has been available for uh, over 30 years. Um, and uh, in a recent review on uh, over 100 patients transplanted in Italy, it was clearly shown that thalassemia patients re return essentially to normal lifestyle after bone marrow tra tra transplantation, both in terms of late effects, um, ability to uh, have an academic career, uh, employment, and uh, approximately 50% uh, have been able to have uh, normal children. Now let's come to the experience of the Kutu Children Foundation in uh, low resource settings uh, in Pakistan. 
uh, the project started thanks to the uh, involvement and commitment of a family with a little girl with thalassemia. Uh, she did not have a nice sibling and she came to Italy for a transplantation using uh, maternal uh, stem cells. Um, fortunately, she did well and uh, the family um, committed to a project in collaboration with the Kyoto Children Foundation that would extend access to cure to as many children as possible in Pakistan. Where thalassemia is a big problem, it's probably the most frequent life-threatening non-infectious disease in that country, children. Uh, thalassemia carrier is 5% uh, of the population, that is to say approximately 8 million people. There are several thousand new births with thalassemia per year and it is estimated there are roughly 60,000 patients with thalassemia, very few of whom uh, will survive to be adults. Thalassemia is also the main consumer of donated blood. So the aims of this project in Pakistan, which was initially sponsored by the Voltaire um, Basque BCN and Italian Bank, was to obtain at least 80% cure in low risk patients with a matched sibling, in other words, uh, results comparable to those obtained in rich countries, and also use the offer of formal transplantation to increase awareness and access to cure, screening, and prevention. Um, to develop a, a, a tools for uh, online collaboration, telemedicine, uh, and uh, three institutions were willing to partner in this uh, endeavor. The first one was the National Institute of Blood Disease in Karachi, who already had been doing the transplantation for several years. Then uh, uh, the first host uh, the government hospital in Pakistan uh, willing to embark in this is the, uh, the Children's Hospital and the Pakistan Institute of Medical Science and another um, corporate hospital, Shift International Hospital. So private-public partnerships are very important to guarantee that uh, most uh, advanced bone marrow transplant uh, related tests were available within this uh, small network. After on-site training, um, a small two-bedded transplant unit was developed in the, uh, thanks to the uh, collaboration and availability of the uh, Pakistan's medical science administrators. It was a relatively small unit which was uh, isolated from the rest of the hospital but didn't really have any fancy air control system. Uh, the nursing lounge, uh, this is our first patient. We did not impose uh, masks and actually we did encourage siblings to spend time with their um, little brother or sister that was undergoing transportation. This is a, a pants lounge with a washing machine and some simple uh, cooking facilities. Nursing station connected to the internet. Meeting room to do Skype rounds on patients. This was uh, started in uh, 2009 and uh, we, actually, we then compared the results of this uh, homogeneous group of uh, young children with normal liver, with uh, matched siblings, so the low risk patients, uh, done with the same protocol in Italy and in Pakistan, and actually results were the same, both in terms of uh, thalassemia free survival, that is to say, cure, and in terms of overall survival. Uh, so <clears throat> this is our first child cure with a sister donor. Uh, this uh, initial success in Pakistan allowed uh, to replicate this in India, in Jaipur, the capital of Rajasthan, a uh, region of India with 60 million people, a lot of thalassemia, and uh, no transport center. This was uh, developed thanks to the commitment of a local group of uh, professionals in Jaipur. And, uh, um, actually, when we combined the initial experience at startup of both the Pakistan Institute of Medical Science and uh, the uh, Southeast Asia Institute for Thalassemia in Jaipur, uh, where transplant were uh, 
done by local physicians that did not really have a lot of experience transplantation, but there was a structure and, and uh, a very intense cooperation program. Actually, even from the very beginning, the results uh, could be very good. So in the first six patients in, uh, in PAX and six, six patients in, in Jaipur, India, uh, enjoyed a 92% cure. So this was very encouraging in terms of the potential to set up new centers throughout um, developing countries where thalassemia is very frequent. Unfortunately, high-risk patients did not enjoy uh, the same success rate and actually we stopped doing high-risk patients. So we're trying to uh, modify and transform all high-risk patients in low-risk patients by aggressive chelation and the use of other drugs. Cost. Essentially, the cost of a bone marrow transplantation in uh, Pakistan was in the range of 12,000 US dollars plus uh, 2,000 for uh, family support. But the point is that in low risk patients, the uh, results, as I shown before, were comparable to those obtained in rich countries, but the cost is 10 times lower. And actually, the cost of transplant compares quite favorably to the cost of uh, long term supportive care. So, that uh, up roughly is, is equivalent to that of a few years of, of non curative supportive care. Indirect positive effects of bone marrow transplantation are potentially several. It can increase awareness about thalassemia, attracts family for screening and prevention programs, generate resources for supportive care and prevention. Uh, increases compliance with chelation and safe blood use uh, because it gives hope that there is a, a, a realistic and available cure to families with children with thalassemia, attracts and motivates professionals, empower medical centers and pave the way for the cure of related disorders from sickle cell disease to plastic anemia to leukemia, and foster research, higher education and development. So in conclusion, Bone marrow transplantation has the potential to be more widely applicable and accessible in thalassemia prone regions. Several professionals have uh, contributed to this uh, huge amount of work. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you will support our Stop Thalassemia campaign.